All right, well, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Whole Body Podcast. Today, we are very fortunate to introduce Daisy Chapanese all the way from the US on the East Coast, New Jersey. And Stacey has a business called Stacey Trapanese Wellness, and she is very uh, up to date with all holistic health practicing techniques. And we are probably going to spend about the next 40, 45 minutes chatting to Stacey about what she does, how she does it, and what she can offer anyone that's listening. So thank you, Stacey, very much. Big welcome, big love all the way across the other side of the world. And let us know what do you do and how do you do it? Well, thank you for having me. I'm very honored. Um, so what I do, I'm an integrative health practitioner, which is, so it, I'll explain what integrative health is first. Cool. Integrative yeah. health is a variety of modalities taken from functional medicine. So, so and some, even some Western medicine, Eastern medicine. So, um, anything from traditional Chinese medicine to Beautiful. the practices of, fr from India, like oil pulling and abhyanga, like anything like that from those practices all combined into one to help someone identify the root cause of disease in their body. Oh. So, but my basis, I started out as a counselor. Mm-hmm. I was a okay. substance abuse counselor first. Right. Okay. Interesting. And I, yes. And I loved that work, but every time I was helping clients, I'm like, there's something they keep, we keep talking about trauma and mm. talking about mm. trauma is not helping release trauma. So I'm like, what can I do to help people in a different way? And I looked into energy work. Mm. So I learned Reiki. I learned Theta healing. Um, and I realized I've always been intuitive. So it just came naturally to me really to incorporate yeah. these modalities in with counseling. Right. Cool. And so I was able, yeah. So I was able to help people release trauma and not constantly have to talk about it. Like we talk about it once, identify a belief attached to it, and then use energy work to remove that belief. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. And then with the when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. I when the you know when everyone was getting COVID at the very beginning of the pandemic, I did get COVID. However, I couldn't breathe for about six weeks and I kept going to the hospital. I'm like, please just give me a CAT scan. I can't breathe. There must be a blood clot in my lung. And it was a ruptured mm. silicone implant. Oh, wow. Wow. True. Goodness. Oh, that's uh, pretty, you would have been pretty horrified to know that that had happened, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, you know yeah. what, I was getting, now I know I was getting all of the symptoms of what that, what a ruptured implant feels like. It does cause chest pain, burning. I was getting all of those symptoms, but I had no idea. I just thought it was a blood clot or something, you know, associating right. it to yeah. COVID. So we're, we're talking about breast plant illness here now, right? Is that what, um, yeah. where we're going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty horrific stories I hear on Instagram about breast plant illness. So it started with you. Well, I guess it didn't start with a ruptured silicone implant, but how do you think it manifested in your body prior to this? So when I, so I have a birth defect called Poland syndrome. Hmm. Okay, and which it, is, what is that? Yeah, it's very rare. So I, I of course, you know, I'm like, Ooh, of course I have the rare, rare. Condition. Yes, of course. But um, yes. Right. So it's, it manifests in a few different ways. So sometimes you might see a person with a smaller hand. Just I don't know one? if you've ever seen that. Uh, Poland no. syndrome, yeah. It could be a, a smaller hand or you can be missing your pectoral muscle on one side of your body. Oh, okay, right. Goodness, how and old affects, were you when you were diagnosed with this? Oh my goodness. I wasn't diagnosed with Poland syndrome until I was 
getting my implants out at 45 years old. Oh, so are we spelling this P-O-L-I-N, Poland? Poland syndrome. Uh, yeah, the, the way you, yeah, the, like the country, Poland. Same spelling. Oh, Poland syndrome. Right. Okay, cool. All right. So that happened. Yeah. So that happened. So I grew up with that and I just didn't know. I just thought I, I didn't have a breast on my left side. Mm. I had no idea it was an actual congenital defect. Syndrome. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so when I was about 18 years old, my mother took me to a surgeon and, you know, they were like, we had, we could give her breast implants. They didn't have a yeah. lot of, they didn't have a fat transfer back then, you know, or maybe yeah. it wasn't really no. done, you know? So I received implants at 18 and then I had another full reconstructive surgery at 20 right. where I received wow. silicone implants. Oh goodness. Yeah. All right. So, so that was, I um, got the silicone. Yeah. Sorry, you go. No, it's okay. So I, um, so I got the silicone implants. They were actually banned at the time in the United States because there had been, it had been all over the news that silicone implants are making women sick. Right. So what, what year are we talking about here? We're talking 19, I believe it was 1998. Goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. So they were banned. Wow, but my, right. So they were banned already my, in the U.S.? They were banned in the U.S. And my surgeon said, because I have a condition that he can, you know, he can request that I get silicone implants because women who had breast cancer and were getting yeah. you know mastectomies yeah, yeah, they yeah. were also able to get silicone because it just forms to the body better than mm -hmm. the saline implants mm -hmm. so i got them and you know he did change my life i went from a very shy mm. insecure young woman and i felt more secure more confident they looked more natural um but about a year and a half into having implants, I developed severe seasonal allergies. Right. Oh goodness. And you don't you don't correlate the two together, right? You don't you don't think not oh, at all. Is, no, no, no. And in the society we live in, because I'm sure it's the same where you are, there's always these excuses like, well, you're getting older, or yeah. you know, yeah. oh, you could develop allergies at any age, you know, like all yes. of these band-aids for our health. Right. So, mm -hmm. and then I, um, I was also a teacher. I taught high school English literature for 12 years. And oh, so, God. and then I left to go into counseling from there, but I was always sick. I was always sore throat, sinus infections, um, Goodness, strep, strep throat. And everybody would say, well, you work with kids. Uh, of, course, of course, you're of course, yeah, of course. The most hurt was then, though, doesn't it? Right. So I'm like, oh yeah. yeah, okay. And you know, it's funny. My dad is a very intuitive man, and he he said to me when I was getting the implants, "You should leave your body alone. They're going to make you sick." Wise, the wisdom of the old, huh? Or the wisdom of the wise? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't until the pandemic then, you know, fast forwarding all of these symptoms I had, you know, there's about 44 symptoms of breast implant illness and I had about 34 of them. Yeah, gosh, gosh. So your yeah. poor body all that time is fighting something it doesn't want, making you sick. Exactly what your dad said. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. So once I found out I had a ruptured implant during the pandemic, I decided I want these out of my body. I don't care if I go back to the quote unquote deformed version of myself, oh. you know, oh, I, yeah. um, yeah, that was a whole healing ride in itself, you know, just self-acceptance and self-love journey. But yeah. I said, I have to, I want them out. I want them out. So I had them removed by a surgeon who told me he was going to remove 
the entire capsule that yes. is around the implant. It kind of forms and, around the implant, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it protects your body. That's what it's, you know, yep. doing. That's what its job is. He yeah. did not. So he did not remove that. He left oh. that inside of me with oh. ruptured silicone. <gasps> oh, Stacy. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't sound good. No. No. So I I let my body heal a little bit, you know, for the last two years. And now I schedule to have that surgery full, right, you know, the full coming. capsule removal. May 30th, yes. It's coming. Oh, not far so. away at all. Like a month and a half. No. So just going back to the whole removal of the breast plant, the breast implants during COVID, I know that our hospitals here were overrun and any um, surgery that wasn't an emergency surgery was postponed. It was postponed, it kept getting postponed. But in the US, you were still fortunate that you could have this surgery done at that time. Yes, because... The pandemic was when? 2020, 2020. That's when it started, right? I was, I nearly have forgotten, but yes, 2020. Yep. I know. I feel, I know we all want to forget in a way. So, um, okay. So that was March of 2020. Yes. And then I had, I had surgery. So I found out I had a ruptured implant May of 2020. Right. And oh, then I had oh, them okay. out October. October 2020 I had them out goodness so and that was just a fairly straightforward booking you could get in easily to do that no delays uh no basically it was they were like when do you want to have surgery which was a red flag right there in itself <laughs> yes yes well exactly exactly when you think about this at the time yeah that's why I'm asking yeah. you because it seems really fortunate thank the lord that you could have this and um at that time yeah it worked out for you yeah most people i know like because i met a lot of women so after i got my implants out and i woke up from surgery and he said to me you know i said did you get all the capsules out and he was like yeah no i couldn't oh i'm like what because so yeah he wasn't skilled. That's the thing. Uh, so there's a special surgery called an end block capsulectomy that right. there's a handful, there's a handful of surgeons in the United States who perform that surgery. They're usually microsurgeons and they also believe in breast implant illness. Right. Yes. Yes. That's half the, the battle. You know, yeah. like the surgeon I'm going to in May, he does not do implants anymore he, he mm. on a, he's told me on a moral and ethical level i cannot put these in women no exactly none of them not the saline or the silicon none he won't do it none. no fair good on him and you found the right guy i'm yeah that's why and i i met him years ago after so after i have the surgery and i am so i did feel much better i felt great mm. for about a year but then mm. all the symptoms started to come back because obviously the toxins are still there, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, and then I got the lupus diagnosis. Yeah, wow. Lupus is an interesting um, disease or pathology to have, isn't it, in your body? What? How does it manifest for you? Because everyone is different, I hear. I'm not really up to date yeah. with how lupus presents yet. Yeah, so lupus is an interesting autoimmune disease because yes. it affects the skin as well yeah. as it usually affects the kidneys the most out of all the organs. Right. But um, for me, for me, I looked back, I had symptoms of lupus as soon as I got about, I got, so maybe by 25, 26 yeah. years old. Now so I, I had had implants maybe for five, five years, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was, I was, um, with my husband who we were dating at the time, but we went on a vacation and I developed a rash oh. from the sun. Yes. And that is lupus. Yep. Yes. And I was like, this is so weird. I never had a rash from the, I love the sun, you know, like I never yeah. had a rash from the sun before. So for me, I do get, I'm very photosensitive. 
um yeah, that's which is a shame it? because yeah and the sun is so healing and it's just you know so i i have photosensitivity um but i don't get the usual rash they get like a butterfly rash usually with lupus ah, like across ah, the nose right. and the cheeks i don't uh -huh. i don't have Good. that thing you know knock on wood but um hair loss extreme extreme fatigue extreme i can sleep Goodness. all night and i wake up and i'm tired and yeah. um a lot i get joint pain in my hands mostly ah um, okay. so that's how it's manifesting for me yeah so and how do you manage how do you manage lupus or what have you been able to find that's helped you um well, because I, because I did, so after I got my implants out, I started to go down a rabbit hole of health and wellness, you know, all things health. Yeah. There's always something and, health, isn't there, that brings people into this, into this environment I've, I've found by the, all the people I've chatted to, it's always a health crisis. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, I want to. I'm like, how do I, how do I get these toxins out of my body? You know, I, I started like going down all looking up all this information, listening to all different doctors, uh, functional doctors mm -mm. and, you know, finding them on Instagram, which I'm like the internet. I used to think it was, I'm like, the internet's the devil. Uh, <laughs> In a no, way. not anymore. Thank like, oh, We love no, it, but we hate like, it. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for the internet. So yeah. I, um, so I was learning all about heavy metals, which brought me to look into the heavy metals that make up implants. Whether oh. they're silicone or saline, it doesn't matter. It's the same oh, chemical right. suit. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we're, we're talking heavy metals, carcinogens, yeah, carcinogens, neurotoxins. I mean, it's all in the makeup of the bag. So I'm like, oh my goodness, all this is terrible. And then just learning about gut issues and I'm like how can I how can I really dive deeper into this so I went back to school for integrative health with Dr. Stephen Cabral he's a naturopathic doctor but he's integrative yeah. so he went to yes. India he studied their practices he went to China yeah. studied their practices so, so um yeah. so I learned from him and I was like you know all right it's time it's time for me to start digging into the health aspect and learning that, you know, I, I really should stay away from gluten. I should mm, eat, yes. you know, soy, like certain things from my particular body. I, I had no idea that were like harming me. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, looking at that, but then I realized like, look, I, I've stumbled on people who are in the implant community who are helping women, they're advocates. And oh, one God. of one of the major ones that I connected with was Amanda Porta. She's the holistic beauty coach on Instagram. Oh, okay. And I was connected to her and she's in L she lives in California. So she's in LA and, and she and I became friends and she was like, you know, she brought me into this community of women who are helping Beautiful. others. And that's when I decided I want to advocate for breast implant illness. Wow, fantastic. And um, so how have you been since you started detoxing? What did you have to do? So first I focused on my gut and I did parasite cleansing, mm -hmm. um, some can and candida cleansing because I had a, you know, yes. I took an organic, organic acids test, which kind of right. tells you what's going on in the gut a little bit. So I took that test. I took a heavy metal uh, hair tissue test. Yes. Uh, okay. I did a cortisol test because I knew my cortisol was out of whack. And after, you know, just taking supplements to kind of remove things and then replenish vitamins, minerals, replenish things that I hadn't been getting. I had been depleted from having implants. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, I do, I went to a functional doctor last year in March and she did my, all my labs and she said on paper, you should be bedridden. Goodness. And you're functioning. 
No one and I'm tried. functioning. Yeah. I go to yeah, I go to the gym. You know, I'm a mom of two. You know, I'm doing all the things, and yeah, I do get tired. And there are days where I I need to just rest and listen to my body and give myself grace, and I do. Mm -hmm. But Good. it's all the things that I'm doing: the healthy eating, the movement. You know, the minerals. Just replacing minerals in itself makes a Very huge important. difference. Yeah, they're so yeah. important, aren't they? So what do you do for movement? What's your favorite movement that you choose to so do? Ironically, I, yeah, so ironically, back in the day, I was a kickboxing instructor. True. Wow. That's high cortisol. If ever I've heard of one. Yeah. <laughs> you picked so, it. You got um, it. Kickbox instructor. That's funny. I like it. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> So I've, I've always been like a gym workout person always since I'm a kid. Cause my, I grew up, my dad always took vitamins, took care of his health and worked out. Yeah. So I, he was always like a role model for me and um, yeah, but now I went to a kickboxing class last summer and I realized I can't like, this is not, you. not, it is not who I am on a lot of different levels. It's just not who I am. And my hands hurt so bad from um, punching I'm like I can't do this yeah. so I go to the gym and I just I'll do some cardio I'll do an elliptical mm -hmm. for a little bit and then I focus on weights yeah good good weights are important they're so important oh, yeah, for women especially yeah. yeah yeah they're so important yeah so what does what does a day in the life of Stacey look like when you're feeling full of energy and you're up in the morning what's your your routine now that's different to what it was when you're on your off days um I obviously I wake up I have kids I have to rouse up for school mm -hmm. um I make sure I'm eating a breakfast I never in my life worried about protein the way I do now it's so important isn't it like you like I just yeah, ate well, a big steak for my dinner and I was so full but I knew I hadn't eaten my protein count for the day, so I had to make myself eat it. It's, it was hard work, but I ate it. I got it in. Yeah, it's we hard, have to. Mm. Yeah, and I was I was a vegetarian for mm. a couple of years. Right, Stacey, how, how different <laughs> do you feel? Do you eat meat now? Yes, I do. You do. And I, I don't love it. I don't love meat in general. I just, mm. you know, but I realized I don't love meat because I have low stomach acid. When you yeah, have yeah. Ad adequate amount of stomach acid, you actually like meat. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll eat a breakfast. I'll have at least 30 grams of protein. Good I have job. fiber. Like Good I have, my meals are intentional. So, um, and then I'll journal. I like to journal a little bit about what I'm grateful for, for that day, that moment, you know, I'll see clients. I will make sure I get some movement in, whether it's at home. I have, this is my office, but I have weights. I have some handheld yeah. weights in here. So I could just yeah. do something if I can't get yeah, to the gym. Same. Yeah. And I try to get, a, I try to get a walk in also, yeah, good. Good. you know, and then I'll, prep dinner and then it's mom duties you know so that's yeah. usually how many or I see clients at night as well because I have a few clients obviously that work during the day so yeah, I see them in the evenings yeah you would have yeah. to so when you were talking a little while ago about I think it was eastern Medi medicine or eastern ways of dealing with things you mentioned a word called I'm going to try and repeat it if you don't know what I'm saying, we won't go on with it. We'll choose something was else it, to talk about. Was it uh, Abiyanga? It was, exactly. That's what I've got written down. What is Abiyanga? Yeah, there there are so many different modalities from what that culture, from, you know, the Eastern standpoint. Um, and I forget exactly. Abiyanga is either, it is a, where they lay you on a table and they use these wooden tools to basically move lymphatic fluid or, cause I can't remember exactly which one it was, or it's when they actually um, cause you to vomit. Oh, okay. That will get rid of things for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so obviously I would never do that with my clients. <laughs> No, <laughs> so no, no, no. We do gentle things, you know, like castor oil packs, you know, things like uh, that. 
but I, I do yeah, yeah. I do focus on lymphatic drainage, but there are other ways to drain the lymph than getting on a hard table and having these wooden like spoolies rolled all over your body. Well, what I'm, I'm really sure like that Asian people would have loved to do. Yes, yes, is, I'm sure it's that, amazing. There's that little culture in I'm sure it's Japan where the people they practically torture themselves, but it's a contest that they do. And they do weird things like they eat fire and they burn themselves and it's a contest that they do every year and do weird things. That's just reminded me of, of that. So thank God you don't do that to your clients. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know. Um, but we did learn all about that in our program because yep. Dr. Cabral did everything. Yeah, He right. went so he and he you. had to do it to learn it. And, you know, I'm like, okay, this is a little, some of this is a little excessive, <laughs> but, yeah, right. you know, it was obviously, he was just trying to show us how it's so different in Western medicine. It is so different because I know I did my Bachelor of Nutrition and we went through, I think it was a whole semester of the history of medicine. It's fascinating. And all those skills, like even um, so all the Chinese medicine skills were stopped because the churches went took went in and told them that they couldn't do this anymore because they wouldn't go to heaven. So a lot of the people in the Chinese culture were shut down. And the same with um, homeopathy because homeopathy couldn't, um, I think they couldn't afford to join the universities that were run by pharmaceutical companies at that time. Yes, I'm, I'm talking way, way back. So homeopathy was ruled out because they couldn't pay the pharmaceutical industry or someone money to keep them running. So I'm pretty sure I've got that story almost right. It's been a little while ago. But those kinds of modalities were closed down and are, they're only just being rediscovered and people use them now. Yeah, I know, because I know what you're, what you're touching on is about John D. Rockefeller in the United States. Oh, is it? He, yeah. In the 1940s, he developed, uh, he didn't develop, he stumbled upon petroleum and realized that you could make pills with petroleum. And so oh. he went and bought up the medical schools and yes. gave them their own, he said, no more homeopathy, no more holistic, yes. nothing. That's when it was. He had yes. articles, yeah, he used propaganda to have articles written up about the doctors who went against him. They were quacks. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, yeah, it's crazy. And they're all paid. It's just all the professors that did research were all paid big money by the pharmaceutical industry to put out stories that weren't actually real to sell more yeah. pharmaceutical goods. <gasps> it's a sham, isn't it? It's coming out slowly, but man, it's a sham. And we've lived yeah. under that um, governance force for so long, for so long. And look what's look what's happening to us all. We're all getting sick. I know. It's it's really wild. And even in some places they're banning supplements and you oh. know, it's crazy. I have a client, she's in Canada, and I had to ship her supplements. Oh that I had to wrap. I had a wrap in birthday paper. I had to put a birthday card with it. I had to say it was candy. I mean, it's it, it's crazy. It's crazy. She said they will they could stop it at the border. They're going to open it. And if it's a supplement, they keep it. Well, they throw it. They get rid mm. of it. But I'm like, this wow. is insanity to me. Like, what what's going on? <laughs> what alternate universe well, are we living that, in? Where did that perspective come from? You know, like what has driven that perspective of not having supplements anymore? What's what's the deal behind that? We will never know. I, I know. I know. And it's crazy because we know it's money driven. You know, we know it's mm -hmm. the pharmaceuticals driving it. So. So is, is your whole family living this holistic life that you live in within your business and within yourself to get yourself well, your hubby and your children, are they all on board? Uh, my, my son is 13. Yeah. He thinks I'm a little, a little um, nuts sometimes yep. with certain things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My daughter, my daughter, ha her thyroid antibodies were elevated. Right. So we, first thing we did was take out gluten. So she's, you know, and we're focusing on more protein for her too. And Good. she's nine. Good. Um, yeah. My husband, 
For the most part. Yeah. For the most part, like he'll eat what I eat. And yeah. then, you know, but they, sometimes they do, they think I'm crazy. You know, they're like the water yeah. you want, do you want distilled water? You want this, you know, we bought a house system to kill mold spores. You know, yeah. So my yeah. husband's like, you are the most, what do you tell me? I'm the biggest investment he's ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky you've been able to find all this out about yourself. Because imagine if you hadn't, what your life would be like. I mean. I know. I'd be really sick. Really you know. Sick. You, and you're, you were telling me that you've got sisters. Are they, do they listen? Or is, is I know with family, it's tricky, right? Oh, my goodness very tricky they're very are you the baby um, i am uh, yeah <laughs> i'm the baby my dad listens to me and my dad is funny he's 80 but he'll tell oh, people gorgeous. my he, he tells people my daughter she's she's like a doctor she's my doctor i listen to everything she tells oh, me you know but right well that's all you I'm need like, dad, dad yeah i'm like please don't tell people i'm a doctor because i'm not <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> So tell me who in the wellness industry would be your an idol or someone that's really inspired you. Any good books that you've read that would be good for people? Have you written a book? I have not written a book. No. Is it I on plan the, to is one it on day. The radar? Yeah, yeah, good. It is on the radar. Um, just to tell my story, you know, of even just trauma growing up, things like that, but it all ties together, you know. What books have I read? The book that changed my life really was The Body Keeps the Score. The Body, I have heard of that book. I have heard of that. And so yes. what? what's it about? Is it about just what it says it's about? It's about epigenetics and how uh -huh. trauma, gets, trauma gets stored in our body. Mm -hmm. And every time we talk about trauma, it just gets restored in like now a different a different place so if it's in different the lungs now place. it's gonna go yeah and how you know there is like genetics is really debunked because we yes. all have we all have genes but something turns them on yes right yep yep so it can so, either be an emotion or a food group or a, a journey right. somewhere that turns on something yeah yeah yeah, you know, it could have been a car accident you got into when you were, you know, you were in the car with your parents at five years old. And then that trauma triggered lupus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's so you know, interesting. It anything um, like that. It's so interesting watching children and the way they interact with the world because I have a little person in my life who I've got one boy grandbaby and five girl grandbabies. There's oh, wow. one boy grandbaby. <laughs> He gets mothered by all the big girls, I think, and they, he looks up to them that, like they're a bit of a, well, to me, he seems to look at them like the big cousins and he really takes on board everything that they say and you just wonder if anything ever gets said that can cause a little bit of hurt in that little human body and how does that manifest as an adult? It's just, and it can be something really simple with kids. It's taken out of context but it's taken on board and, and it grows inside of you as a thought or a pattern or an idea and it presents itself as an adult in a much bigger, bigger way. Because I know I've worked with clients and we've chatted about their childhood and they've had this big trauma and sometimes it's just a simple sentence like, well, did you think that was true? Like, And it just changes their whole perspective of what's happening and it just removes that feeling. Is that what you've found? A hundred percent, yes. Yeah. Even, even with myself. Little... Yes, yeah. absolutely. And the beliefs that we take on are usually from other people because we've been yes. told those things, you know, like um, you're lazy yeah. or you're this or that. And then you be, you really, in your mind, believe that. Like that, oh, that's body. who I am. I'm just lazy, yeah. you know, yeah. or whatever the case is. So I'm, I try to be mindful even with my children not to yes. say limiting beliefs to them yes yes because it's it stifles them and puts them in a box doesn't it they have yeah, to unpack sure. when they, yeah you have to be really careful how you speak to kids it's great that 
you've got that insight with yours and your children are still small, you know, and you can try and make sure. I mean, it's not, it's inevitable. You'll say some things and they'll take it on, which we're all human nature, right? So, yeah. But it, it, I'm human. Very interesting. I made, I've made many mistakes. I've made many mistakes as a parent. Of course, so, we have. You know, yeah. But yeah. I say, my, you know, I always joke around, I go, they'll be in therapy anyway. <laughs> So you've got surgery coming up. Are you looking forward to that? What are you expecting? How are you expecting to feel? Do you know? Um, Well, this is going to be a more in-depth surgery. He said it's going Mm -hmm. to be three to four hours. And he said he will most, he said in cases like this, he does find silicone stuck to the rib cage. Oh, yeah, let's hope not. Yeah. Well, no, it's okay. I'd rather him find it there and remove it. Oh. Remove it, you know? yes. So, um, so I'm expecting. I mean, it, it'll be my fourth surgery in that area. So I just, oh. I don't, I don't know. Part of me is like, I'll be fine, but then the other part of me is like, I mean, I might be in some pain. I don't really know what to expect. No, you might. Yeah, and you're coming into your summer too, aren't you? So it's not like you're going to be stuck inside in the cold. You'll be out, right? Being right. Careful. Um, I have everything. I have things here too. Like I, I have a sauna. That's why oh. I tell you that my husband said I'm, you know, his biggest investment. I'm like, we have to get a sauna. He's like, you can't. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so no, is it is it an infrared to... or? It is. It's infrared an infrared. Sauna, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, I go. If you think about it, if I had to pay a place twenty dollars a session. For all yep. the years I want to use the sauna, doesn't it pay just to own one? That's yeah, my, you know, absolutely. rationale. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, yeah. but I'm doing all the things now to get my body prepared, which I didn't do the last time because I didn't know. So uh-huh, I'm seeing my acupuncturist. Yeah, I'm going for acupuncture. I'm doing lymphatic drainage. I'm doing the sauna. Yeah. I'm just doing all, I'm working out as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To kind of just yeah, get yeah. my body in- prepped. Yep, yep. Um, and I guess for me, I, I understand, you know, we need those muscles when we've been in surgery because you um, you need to push yourself around on the bed and get yourself mobile and get yourself up and down. So you need to make sure your muscle tone is good as you age and especially if you're going into surgeries as well to keep yourself yeah. intact and going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I wasn't doing that last time around, so... Well, you didn't know. You didn't know. So where can people find you, Stacey, and what, what kind of services do you offer? So I offer a variety of services. So I do some counselling work with energy work. Online? Yes, everything is virtual, although I do have oh, some good. people that come to my home, uh-huh. um, but obviously they're local to me. Yeah. And then I also do in- integrative health. So some people just want to they just want to identify what's going on with their gut issues or whatever. So we'll just work on that. Or Mm -hmm. um, like I had, I have a young client, she's 26. She just battled colon cancer. Right. So wow. That's massive. Yeah. So she came to me to work on both her health and her emotional health, her physical and emotional health. Nice. So we're doing, yeah, we're doing, that as well. So you could find me on Instagram mm-hmm. at Stacy Trapanese Wellness. I'm also on TikTok at Stacy Trapanese Wellness, and my website is stacytrapanesewellness.com. So we just put Stacy Trapanese Wellness into Google. We will find you. Yes, you will. Yes, you will pop up because I think I did exactly the same thing. Great. Well, I would like to say thank you very much for. Um, spending this time with us I was going to ask you if you had three top tips you would give to people to help them start their wellness journey or if they're querying about oh I've got this ache or my hair's getting thin or something's not quite right have you got three tips you would give them three tips my first tip would be make sure you're getting enough protein oh good I like that one yeah uh, that's what I say you know yeah make sure you're getting enough protein and eating enough eat yeah. because a lot of women don't eat enough yeah um my second tip would be to 
really try to start loving yourself where oh, you are at that moment yeah that's nice and my third yeah. my third tip would be put celtic sea salt in your water yeah, i know it exactly. sounds so silly but those are your yeah. barrels yeah they make a huge difference in your life and it's just just to taste isn't it it's just enough so you can taste it well we need two teaspoons full a day we need that's the two amount the human body needs Yep. So you could put you could put them in a dish and sprinkle in your food when you cook or sprinkle in your water, you know, yep. throughout make the sure day. You use them up. Yeah, make yeah. sure you use them up. Good, good job. I like that. That's um because I know I put salt on everything, but I haven't measured what I'm actually consuming. That's a good tip. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much. And I will let you get on with your day. Have you got a big day planned? Uh, I have a client at 11 and then 7 p.m. So, no, I don't have a big oh, day. Oh, good. A day, a day of self-care for Stacey. Yeah, I'm going to go to the gym, so I'm going to do that. Oh, good job. Well, thank you so much, and um, I will stay in touch. Thank you so much for having me.